hello everyone you are welcome to my channel the nice no scares if you are new to my channel my channel is about health information and nursing info for a better living you agree with me that health is so isn't it so for you to get helpful information subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a new video today we are going to be talking about diabetes diabetes mellitus the pathophysiology signs and symptoms and treatment but you know diabetes is a very broad topic so if we are to take that topic today we are going to spend a whole lot of hours and days here so i've broken it into two parts the first section that we're going to take today and then the second section so let's get started what is diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus is a chronic metabolic disorder that is characterized by persistently high level of glucose and in time this high glucose level can cause damage to the heart the kidneys the eyes the liver and the nerves pathophysiology of diabetes mellitus there are a number of factors that can cause diabetes mellitus the first one is environmental factors when we say environmental factors we are talking about lifestyle change uh, lifestyle our lifestyle like the kind of food we eat when we eat too much fatty food then sedentary lifestyle smoking taking too much alcohol all these are lifestyle that can cause diabetes and all this kind of lifestyle leads to obesity obesity can cause insulin resistance when you have too much fat in your body your body will be resistant to insulin the cells will just be looking at insulin the insulin will not enter into the cells so that is why we need to reduce our weight so that we will not have insulin resistance so that insulin resistance can affect the muscles and the muscles of the, the cells the cells in the muscles needs glucose to work or function properly you know insulin breaks down the glucose that we eat in our food to make it easier for the cells to absorb it into our body so when there is insulin resistance that means the cells cannot get glucose that is why you have decreased glucose intake and decreased glucose intake can lead to hyperglycemia when we say hyperglycemia we're talking about high blood glucose level that is type 2 diabetes then the other genetic predisposition is it runs in the family when you have an uncle or aunties fathers grandfathers that had diabetes you are more likely to have it so this affects the pancreas this organ here is located behind the stomach that is the organ that secretes insulin just as i said earlier insulin breaks down the carbohydrates we eat into simple sugar so that the cells can make use of it when there is little uh, insulin that means the cells cannot take up sugar or when the cells cannot even recognize insulin so you that means there's a problem there the cells cannot take up sugar so the liver recognizes this and secretes more glucose into the body and this increased hepatic glucose output will lead to hyperglycemia the same high blood sugar which is type 2 diabetes we have two types of diabetes type 1 and type 2 there are other types of diabetes but the main one is type 1 and type 2 that type 1 is uh, more common in young children and 
young adults. In this type of dialysis, the body goes against itself. The body starts fighting itself. It's an autoimmune uh, response. So the body destroys the pancreas. The cells that secrete insulin in the pancreas, the islet of longer hands. And there is no insulin for the body to work. And so, the treatment for that is that you administer insulin. Then, the other type of diabetes is type 2. In this type 2 diabetes, it is common in older people, 45 years and above. In this type of diabetes, insulin is secreted, but the quantity is small, or the cells cannot recognize insulin that is secreted by the pancreas. That is the type 2 diabetes. Lifestyle modifications and some oral anti uh, hyperglycemic, some oral hyperglycemic drugs can control that. What are the signs and symptoms of diabetes? The signs and symptoms include excessive thirst. You drink water all the time. Dry mouth. Excessive hunger. You're always hungry. Fatigue. That is, you're always tired. Blurry vision. Itchy skin. Then when this diabetes continues, there are other symptoms that you now have like frequent yeast infection. Numbness of the extremities. You will feel pain in your leg. And that numbness is called neuropathy. And there's also dark patches on your neck, which is called acanthosis nigricans. So, how do you diagnose diabetes? Diabetes is diagnosed by your healthcare provider. He runs some tests. But what are the risk factors? Genetics. When we say genetics, we are talking about it is hereditary. Just as I said earlier, when you have relations that has it, you too are at risk of having it. Then we have the ethnicity, that is your ethnic group. Africans are more likely to have it. Uh, Asian Americans, African Americans, Hispanics, those ethnic groups are more prone to having diabetes. High blood pressure high alcohol intake, obesity, all these are risk factors. Then we have gestational diabetes. That is, when you were pregnant, your high blood, your glucose was high, you can also have diabetes. That is a predisposing factor also. There are women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. All this group of persons are at high risk for developing diabetes. Diagnosis of diabetes. Your healthcare provider, as I said earlier, will run some tests for you to diagnose if whether you have diabetes. The first test is the AIC test, the glycosylated hemoglobin test. This test measures your average blood glucose level for two to three months. The other test is the fasting blood sugar test. The fasting blood sugar test, your Sugar level is tested on an empty stomach. That is for up to 8 hours. You will not eat or drink anything except water. The other test is the glucose tolerance test. In this test, before you take a drink, before you take a sweet drink, your sugar level is tested. Then an hour after it is tested and then two hours later is also tested. This helps to determine the way your body reacts to glucose so diabetes can be managed but the main work depends on you because it's a team work but you have to do much of the work because it requires lifestyle modifications and changes if you visit your doctor regularly take your medications well eat well do exercise okay then you can reduce the complications of diabetes. So, this is the first part of the topic. You watch out for the next part. 
thank you very much for watching if you have any suggestions or comments please drop them in the description box down below and do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you know of anyone that this topic will be of help to please share thank you very much